Well, hello everyone, it's Kevin here, and that was the My DMX Go. I wanted to talk today about the setup, the configuration, and basically my overall thoughts on the My DMX Go. And of course, along the way, I'd like to talk a little bit about some tips and tricks, some things that I've done to make it work and get it to be rock solid for my events because Unfortunately, the My DMX Go has some issues with some intermittent uh, consistency problems that a lot of folks have run into. So I think I've cracked the code, or at least uh, what I've done here, and I'll show you step by step uh, the the different things that I've done. I think um, so far I've been rock solid, and things have been working really, really well. Where I've strayed or where I've had little issues, I'll talk about those things. And I'll tell you, um, you know, how what kind of problems that manifested based on those issues. So, how I wanted to do the video today is first talk a little bit about the My DMX Go unit itself. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, my tablet that I use. Uh, you might have seen me um, messing with my little tablet on the side here. I'm going to show you guys that it's just an iPad, but I use an iPad to work with the, my DMX Go. So I'll show you guys that um, and talk a little bit about how I set it up. And then of course, I'll talk about the hardware configuration too. And then we'll look at the software a little bit, okay? So I'll probably take you off the tripod a little bit and show you around. So this is my setup here and you probably have seen this from other videos, but uh, essentially I have my DDJ1000 as my mixer and controller. I have a MacBook Pro here on a on a laptop arm. This is my uh, the laptop I used to DJ. And also over here, I've got on a little arm here <laughs> attached to my case, I've got this iPad. Now, essentially, this iPad is running my DMX Go software, as you can see. That's a software app, so the actual my DMX Go unit is in my controller case, so uh, my coffin case here. And here's the unit. It's um, right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put us back on the tripod, and I'm gonna lift out my DDJ-1000 so you can see the unit. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift off, I have this clamp here um, that you can probably see that holds my iPad in place. I'm gonna put this off to the side for a second and I wanna lift this up so you can see actually under it. Um, but of course I have cables and things connected so I'm gonna have to disconnect a few cables and I just disconnected all the cables and things so I'm taking out the the controller so you can see underneath. All right, so here's the view under the controller. First, you see the My DMX Go box here and I've uh, fixed it to this felt of the case with a piece of uh, double-sided Velcro. And essentially what I've got here, uh, if you look at the unit, is just the Wi-Fi antenna. This is just the Wi-Fi antenna that comes with the unit, of course. This is a USB-C power connector here uh, that basically um, winds its way over to my power strip that's in that's also um, here in my case. And then um, also you'll see this. Uh, this is a DMX connector. And on the My DMX Go, there are really uh, two different um, I guess universes that you can set up and connect to. And so I'm using the first one here. And this My DMX uh, Go is then attached to a DMX patch cord to this little guy right here, okay? And this is a wireless Donner transmitter, okay? So uh, unfortunately this unit has to be powered uh, separately. So um, I've got this powered and uh, also connected to my power strip. And what happens here, in theory, is that my, <laughs> the theory is, right, the iPad connects to wirelessly over um, a wireless network connection to the MyDMX Go through this transmitter. The MyDMX Go communicates what the software, what settings you put in the app, through the DMX cable, 
it will actually go through the wireless donner, then this will translate to my lights. Now I can show you um, what I've done here is just set up some lights here in the corner of the room. I've got uh, a couple Chave Wash Effects 2s. Um, and then also I've got a couple little moving heads. Uh, these are just Intimidator Spot 110s. So I've got these all connected and you can see on the back, you'll be able to see the wireless donner. So that's the, the do donner connectors. Um, and you can see that they're blinking, which means they're connected and they're working. Um, they're actually transmitting or talking with the transmitter here. So those are the receivers actually, and these, this is the transmitter. So um, blinking is good. <laughs> okay, so that's essentially the um, setup. Now, what's important about what we have here, what's important about the uh, some lessons learned I would say about connectivity is number one, we've got to have some distance between this little antenna, this Wi Fi transmitter, and the wireless donor. In fact, I'm I'm wondering if even other um, transmitters um, or devices could interfere with this. I know that whenever I would have the wireless donor unit attached directly to the MyDMX Go box, I would have problems. So that's tip number one, is to separate these two. And this is about two feet, maybe a foot and a half. Um, and this is just a two foot DMX patch cord. So get yourself some, some sort of patch cord or something to separate. And it can be more than two feet, but I've found that this works well. And when I have, uh, when the controller's in the case, it looks a little messy right now, but um, when the controller's in the case um, and you don't see all this, this guy, the transmitter, I kind of just set right here. Um, I store it in the box here um, in the coffin, but I store it right there. So it's sufficiently far away, okay? That would be my first tip in order to get the, the setup, the hardware architecture correct, correct. My second tip would be get this, this little Wi-Fi transmitter as close to your device, your tablet as possible. And you can see I attach this right on the edge of my coffin case. So it's right there. Okay, the proximity is very close. It's almost line of sight, um, if, if not line of sight. And I'm, I'm really happy with the fact that um, with this proximity basically prevents any kind of um, like connection problems or dropouts that I used to get when I would have my iPad in different places or even having this device under my controller, but in the opposite corner, like let's say over here. When I had it over here, there there was a big piece of plastic and metal <laughs> between my iPad and the my DMX Go box and the little Wi-Fi transmitter. So by moving it here, I've seen much more positive and consistent connectivity, okay? So that's like tip number two with architecture or hardware setup is get the Wi-Fi uh, transmitter close to your uh, Wi-Fi device. Um, I guess this is a receiver, but anyway, you, you, you get my point. Get those two devices close together and line of sight if possible. Um, don't have them far apart. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is kind of transition back. I'm going to put the controller back in the case and we'll keep nice. going. Okay. This will be the perfect moment to take a second and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mobile DJ Remastered. Hopefully you're finding this video helpful and there'll be a lot more. So just subscribe and then you'll be sure to be alerted to all the good content that drops. Okay. Thank you. So everything's back in place. Now, next I want to talk about setting up the actual firmware and settings in the MyDMX Go unit itself. So um, first, what we'll do is I've just grabbed a USB-C cable, okay? So we're gonna need one of these. And I'm going to attach it to the device. Now, right now, um, it's being powered by USB-C, so I'm just gonna disconnect the power cable by the way, I kind of like having it right here because um, I am able to quickly grab um, this and like unpower, you know, 
reset it or whatever if I have any problems. So it's kind of nice placement actually from that perspective too. Okay, and I'm just gonna plug this in to my MacBook. All right, cool. Now, um, now that I have, <laughs> you can kind of see I'm connected. What I'll do is I'm gonna go into the firmware manager. Now this is pretty easy. If you go to um, lightwriter.com, okay? I'll just start from the beginning so you guys can see. Lightwriter.com, which uh, by the way, Lightwriter is um, the original name of the Mighty Mexico and, until ADJ bought the unit and, um, and started marketing it. But um, anyway, it's still available under the Lightwriter name. On this uh, web page, if you go to download, scroll down, and you'll see Hardware Manager. This is the, the software or the app that will allow you to manage the software on the unit itself. So um, let's see, open it up. Hardware Manager. Of course, this can be done on a PC too. All right. So, because I'm connected, I can see the unit. Uh, I know that if you do not connect through a USB C cable, um, or if you have some other kind of like, um, at one point I was using, for whatever reason, a uh, connector that turned it, this into a USB A, and then I went back to USB C with another connector. I don't know, it didn't work. Anyway, USB C all the way through and it works. So I click this unit, it looks like a projector, and if it connects, you'll see some stats, okay? So here are different like applications and settings that you can do that you can work with here, okay? Um, and what I'll do is I'm just gonna show you guys the Wi-Fi screen. And when you click Wi-Fi, it comes up and it basically says station or access point. Um, we're using this unit as an access point because we want the iPad to talk to the MyDMX Go. So you have to click access point. So I'm just gonna put this camera down just for a second because I have a, a password on here. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, you can kind of see. This is how you set it up. And I just renamed it to my uh, DJ company name and uh, left, I think most of the settings, except for this one, very important, channel for the Wi-Fi. Um, this is a big problem. I think on channel one, where it this defaults, is a lot of people had a lot of problems with being on channel one. And as you can see, you can probably scroll through here and you know pick whatever channel you want. Um, a lot a lot of folks I think are getting to venues and scanning the channels for availability before they pick their channel for their my New Mexico I've set it to 11 which is um, I don't know it's it's a higher higher um, up in the sequence and I've not had any problems being at 11 so I would suggest you know you could rename this if you want. I would suggest putting in your own password, just changing it from the default that my DMX Go gives you. And I would suggest making this channel, you know, I don't know, 10 or 11 or 12 or something higher, uh, maybe double digits, okay? I'm not even sure how high this goes. Looks like 12 is the highest it goes. Okay, so get, that's a less crowded uh, bandwidth or network um, address or channel or whatnot. So use something like that. So I'm gonna put my password back in. Um, now, um, and I can just say store and it's set up. The other piece that is critical here, up at the top, there's a firmware icons. Click that and double check that you have the latest and greatest firmware. This is definitely something that would take you down. It will, it will, um, hurt the consistency if you do not have the most current version. Um, and I think this, uh, of course, my software, my website, when I accessed Lightwriter, when I used Chrome, it actually attached to the internet and pulled this down and said, hey, look, this is your latest. So this is good. This matches up. If it didn't match up, I can click firmware update and it will go ahead and update the unit. And I clicked it. Let's see if it, it's actually doing it. Okay. So I guess I'm just resetting the firmware. Okay, cool. 
All right, and let me let me check. These little lights help me to kind of tell me if, if it's on and if it's active and connected. Okay, cool. It looks good. Now, notice this that uh, you know once you do this, if you had to jump up a firmware uh, version or whatnot, just double check that your Wi-Fi settings and things haven't changed. There's some other settings in here that you could probably play with, but that's those are the core two things that I think you need to do. Firmware, Wi-Fi channel. Get those set in your uh, hardware manager here on your MyDMX Go. And that is, um, that's another step toward consistent performance with this guy, okay? So next, what I wanna do is show you guys what I do on the iPad, okay? So I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna just kind of, uh, I'm gonna shut down my DMX Go and we're gonna start from scratch. So my first tip on your tablet is I would not use this, I would not have this tablet um, like, you know, set up and, and used for lots of different purposes. I would try to keep it kind of clean. Um, I use it for a couple of different things. I use it for like karaoke and some other things, but uh, it's mo this is mostly a DJ dedicated iPad. That's important because the more settings and, and stuff you get into the, into, the, into the system can, I think, conflict. One example is, I'll show you this. Here, here's a tip on your setup, is go into your settings and go to Wi-Fi, okay? And what I would do, and, and this is, uh, I think, an important piece of keeping a consistent setup, is wipe out uh, on these My Networks, wipe out any networks that you have memorized, okay? Unless they're critical, like your home network. This is my home network, Summers. And the Smilestones DMX is the actual My DMX Go unit, okay? Um, and then there's just my phone. But wipe out any other networks. Um, and if you have to keep them, uh, if you wanna keep them, like I, I definitely wanna keep my, my home network, click the little I next to it, okay, the little settings, and turn off auto join. Turn that off. If you need to forget the network, you can do that and that'll erase it from the from the memory. But forget, if you, you're not gonna forget, definitely turn off auto join, okay? Turn off auto join on every Wi-Fi network here. This is very important. This is what I think takes people down sometimes with this Mighty Mexico setup because at least in the iPad architecture, the um, iOS is gonna, if it detects that I'm in range of this other Wi-Fi network and it's either stronger or I'm trying to do something in the background, some a background app or something needs to update. It's going to say, I can't find the internet on Smilestones D DMX, the, the My DMX Go. I'm going to go ahead and, and go and try to grab another Wi-Fi connection. I don't know if that's true, but it sure seems like it happens because if I left, and I have a good case study here, when I did a recent iOS update, all my Wi-Fi switched back into um, auto join mode. So the the summers, and I actually had like summers basement. I had some others that were they they flipped to auto join. Like somehow the iOS went ahead and did that. That um, created a problem. So every like hour or so, if I didn't actively use my DMX Go the app, it would actually shut down the connection between Smilestones DMX. Uh, you know, the it would shut down the iPad to the My DMX Go Wi-Fi connection, and it would sw it, even if I wasn't in range of my personal Wi-Fi network. So very important, get them out of there, and or you know, at the very least, go in here and turn off auto join. I know I belabored that, but um, and, and any kind of automated uh, joining, you don't want that. Okay, so that would be um, I think my. Biggest tip on Wi-Fi networks because that's going to give you um, a big problem if you have those in there. Now, the other thing um, about the iPad is, of course, when you're using the software, okay, if I go in here and I, here, let me bounce out, and if I'm in the software, my DMX Go, there's really two ways you can think about it. If I want to use the lights, I have to be connected to my, my DMX Go, um, the, the Wi-Fi network on the My DMX Go. So that makes sense. 
if I want to do things like download light fixtures and connect like the Chave, um, you know, the, the lights that I have here or new lights that I want to connect, I can't be connected to the MyDMX Go, okay? I have to be connected to the internet, which I know it makes sense and it's logical, but just it's worth repeating that, um, and, and basically what I'm talking about is, let's go ahead and look at that. I'm not gonna do a full tutorial on that piece because um, there are some other people who have done way better job uh, of that and very thorough. But let's say I wanted to add some, um, what did I do here? Sorry. Okay, so I'm in Wi-Fi and I'm gonna go ahead and join my personal, my home network, okay? So then it comes up here and it, you know, obviously we wait for the check mark. Uh, unable to join, awesome. Try again. And it goes round and round and then boom, we'll get the check mark hopefully. Yeah, this is working great. <laughs> um, let's try one more time. Hey, here it comes. Okay, so I got the check mark. And if I go into My DMX Go, okay, here's the app. And uh, by the way, you can get it from the App Store and everything. These controls on the My DMX Go are not going to control the lights now because we're not connected. And you can kind of double check that by clicking this little settings bar up here. And there's no unit here under interfaces. Okay, and you can click refresh and it's not gonna find anything. It's not gonna find the My DMX Go unit that we named, um, you know, Smilestones. So it's not gonna find it because it's not connected. But what I am connected to is the internet so I can do fixture updates. So if I click fixtures, okay, here are my wash, my wash effects and my two intimidator spots. And if I wanted to add, you can actually go down here and add either, um, from the global database of different profiles, or you can add your own like user created profile. If you have a light that's not in a database, which there's a lot in this database, I mean, it's ADJ, so they're gonna, they're gonna know about a lot of um, different lights and you can imagine um, what happens is people like make requests and then they add profiles, okay? So let's just say I've got a dew cooler, I don't know what that is. And then of course, here's the lights that they have in the database and you could pick the fixture, you could add it, okay, right here, add it. And then you could go through and give it an address. So you can see my wash effects has the address starting at the MX channel one. And then I'm using um, my wash effects two starts at 29, etc. And then basically you're set up and you have your fixtures and you can do, you can copy paste fixtures. It's a really neat interface. Like I said, I'm not going to start from scratch and show you how to add because I'm going to reference a video. Um, actually, I'll say it now. It's um, it's a video from a guy named James at the uh, Get In The Mix uh, YouTube channel. And it's called A Complete Guide to the ADJ um, My DMX Go Tutorial. And it's awesome. I'm going to put a link in the description for sure so you guys can check that out if you need to add your lights. But... Um, I just wanted to make that distinction, kind of circling back, and I'm gonna go back to live mode. And this is a live mode. Um, making that distinction, if you wanna add fixtures, make sure that you're not connected to this guy, <laughs> that you're actually connected to the real internet. Now, let's go back. And uh, by the way, whenever I'm switching around Wi-Fi, I just, I just close my DMX Go and try to make every sure every app is closed because, um, I don't know, it just helps um, with consistency again. Um, I, I'm a creature of habit, so if something works, I try to repeat it. Um, let's go ahead and connect now to the Smilestones DMX. It says weak security. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm getting punked out by my... Okay, now, did you see what happened? Connected, and it dropped. So I always wait for the check mark, and then I just wait for a second, just to make sure it's going to stick. Okay, quote-unquote stick. I don't know why it's flimsy, um, but... Uh, it just seems a little bit uh, iffy, but now I'm I'm pretty confident. If it lasts for more than a couple seconds, then I'm feeling confident that it's going to stay connected. And like I said, all these little factors, turning off the auto join, making sure I've got close proximity between this little Wi-Fi signal and my iPad, all these things kind of like matter and they all aggregate into a consistent uh, 
you know, connection. So I feel good. I'm still connected. Okay, I'll get out of this and I'll launch my DMX Go again. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to go and uh, I had powered off my lights. Um, let me go over here and just power on this power strip. Part of the mess here. I just I wanted to show you guys with the real example. Okay, so now my these guys will power up. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the shades. So cut out some sunshine. Now, um, <laughs> this is really, really bright. These wash effects are so bright. Um, in fact, um, yeah, you can see. Um, and now my movers are on and I've got that on. Now, here. Okay, I just zeroed them out to black. Okay, you can kind of see. And by the way, you can tell um, those addresses we talked about earlier, um, you can see how um, they're addressed here. Um, they're upside down, of course, but anyway, you can see how they're addressed. This is the DMX1 there. And okay, so let's go back to here. So what's going on is if I click this little menu icon, I will now see my DMX Go because I'm attached to the unit. Now let's say that I attached to the Wi-Fi and I go in here and I don't see I don't see any connectivity with my lights. The lights aren't uh, interacting with the software. If I click this refresh, okay, it should find this interface because I'm attached to the Wi-Fi network that is that owns it. Okay, so there I found it and it's good to go. Now, um, if you don't find it, I would start over. Okay, and start over could mean it, it, it could mean shut down your iPad completely, power off your My DMX Go, power it back on, turn this back on, and and try that. Okay, um, and of course you you would want to troubleshoot your connectivity, like making sure that your wireless donor, or if you're using wired DMX, that it's all set up. But that's what I would I would um, I've had to do that before, um, but. As I mentioned to you, with doing these different improvements that I'm talking you through and, and walking this process, I've not had to do that in many events, okay? So this seems to be rock solid for me. So moving on, I of course have the My DMX Go and um, I clicked it and it turned it off, okay? So you have to make sure to make sure it's highlighted and now it's on and connected. So I can click back over here in the interface. Now this is a super cool interface to play with. It's just a lot of fun. So I can do all kinds of stuff. So what we're gonna do first is, um, I'm gonna show you guys just a couple of different things here. Um, first and foremost, I've got some presets down here that I use. And these basically are settings that I set up, I preset up and then I locked them in into these settings, okay? So um, just so we don't get blinded, I'm gonna turn these, uh, I'm gonna turn the wash effects down to nothing right now, just to show you guys first. Um, okay, so you can kind of see the movers are kind of doing a sweet pattern, okay? And this is how that looks on the backside, um, okay? And What's going on here is I've just got this little sweet pattern selected. Now I could do all kinds of different settings here and it's so cool what you could do. Like for example, in a real simple way, I can do a targeting. Okay, so essentially I can take this guy and move it up and down. So I can move it wherever I want and I can target these spots, okay? So if I want them over here, if I wanna move them up, if I wanna move them down, you can kind of see I've got this little grid. So that's really great and uh, very useful. Uh, and you can individually select uh, different different uh, spotlights if you want, different movers. That's really good for if you wanted to draw attention to, let's say, a, a bridal party coming in through an entrance or something like that. Now, here's some other things you can do. Like, let's say I want to hit this duck. What's the duck doing? Well, it's kind of like a swimming pattern up and down kind of see it going up and down, up and down. And here's what it looks like, uh, sort of the light, okay? And you can see that they're together, they're moving together and they're very synchronous, but you have all these different features that I can adjust the speed. Uh, I can make it, you know, half speed, 
okay? Or I'm sorry, uh, I guess that would be um, an eighth of a speed. I can make it really, really fast. Um, okay, any case, you can kind of understand that you can do different speed options, okay? And that kind of goes along with whatever BPM that the unit is operating under right now. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute. You can do size. So how big do you want the, the duck, um, I don't know, up and down motion, okay? So I don't know if you can tell. I'm gonna, I'll keep, I'll keep the sweep on here and I'll just adjust the size. Oops, I, I moved it to shift. Um, I'll, I'll put it on um, size, <laughs> maybe I will. I'll put it on size and then I'll adjust it and you'll see like this is 100, okay? And then I'll make it real small. I'll make it like, now it's at 10. Let's see how it's like, it's barely moving. Okay, 15 or so. And then back to 100. So see, you can just play around with these different, and then shift is cool because it, it separates the, the, the two heads or if you have multiple lights. So right now I had a 50% shift and watch what's going on. I don't know if you can see, but one goes up and one goes down. So they're shifted exactly 50% and you can change that. Um, now that's cool and all. So you've got these different patterns. You can move up and down, side to side. Uh, this is wild card mode, okay? Um, <laughs> and then targeting mode, sweeping. So all kinds of different cool features. But um, here is where you can actually switch out the gobo. And it, you know, if you've got different gobos uh, programs. So let's say, let's go to this one. Um, you can kind of see here, I'll show you. It's switched out from that funky one to the light circles, if I can find it here. <laughs> so you can kind of see it now. It's like doing these light circles, okay? Um, so you can do that and you can change color and everything. So it's pretty cool. Now, um, there's also other features like if you had a more advanced, you know, um, gobo or more advanced uh, moving headlight, you could change the prism and other things. Okay, so that's just like a little bit basic uh, operation or overview of that piece. Now this wheel's all about like your washes or your pars or anything like that. And this one's really cool. So here, what I'll do is I'll turn the dimmer and I'm gonna go and raise the wash effects. I won't go too far because they're really bright. And I'll bring the intimidator spots down. Um, I'll just I'll just leave them up. What the heck? Okay, so I've got the washes now on. I've got one kind of facing out toward the blinds and one facing toward me. Um, now this is uh, all these different effects. Like here's a like I don't know what would you call that a strobe light kind of kind of deal. I like this car feature. It's kind of like um, like a Night Rider kind of thing if you're um, <laughs> that old. And look, you can do other things like I can play with size which would basically like here's size, a very low size, and here's a very large size. So you can kind of see it just, it uh, affects the duration of the light on the screen. There's also things like speed, of course, and fade is cool. Watch, watch what the fade effect does. So here's, here's just normal, and then I'm gonna put the fade on. Um, I don't know if this one's that, that pronounced, but some of these like, um, here we go, here's a good one. So this is fade zero. So it see how it's snappy? It's kind of just snapping between the colors. Let me turn on the fade and I'll put it up, I'll put fade high. See how it kind of just like smoothly moves through the colors. That's, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Now you can do all kinds of stuff with the colors, of course, um, if you have a good wash, like this is just, uh, you know, pulling from all colors, but let's say we only want you know, reds, and you can just drag these off the, the grid if you want. Maybe just red and yellow, um, or we'll put an orange in there. Okay, we say okay, and then now it's only gonna show me, um, it's only gonna show me like those colors, yellow and, um, I don't know if it's picking it up. Hopefully it's picking it up okay, but it's really in here in the room, there's a slight green tint to the one. I must have moved the circle into the green a little bit, but it's mostly red, orange, and, and yellow. Um, 
Okay, so in any case, you guys get the, the gist here. Lots of different features. My favorite thing, though, are these presets. So I went through and I got the lights just how I want them, and I set up these presets. So I've got, um, and I, let me show you how to do that. Um, you can actually have lots of presets. See these dots here? You've got a bunch. So I only have page one filled out. So let's say I really like the duck for the for the movers. So they're they're ducking up and down. And of course you can set the different parameters um, and how bright bright you want, zoom, uh, other things if you have uh, very good uh, moving heads. And let's say for this one, I, I'll do the rainbow and uh, whatever, we'll do we'll do these, these colors. Let me get that. Oh, this is probably catching the green. It was just on the edge. Anyway, we'll do those colors. Okay, cool. So I got that going, I got that going. And I like that show. All you do is so simple. You just click and hold and it comes up with, hey, what do you want to name it? And you can name it whatever you want and then you can save it. Okay, and then it'll be locked in. You can you can bring that show up uh, or that preset at a uh, touch of a button. So look what I have, okay? Um, and, and this is, I recommend a couple of these. So definitely, uh, you know, I've got a dancing one and each one, Okay, so this is dance fun. Okay, this is, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit so we can see. Uh, it's basically the movers are moving around, not too crazy, and the colors are pr are primary colors, and they're kind of just like bouncing between, you know, boom, boom, boom. And the effect in the room, you can kind of see, uh, you can kind of see how the color just changes. Okay, it's now it's gonna go with the BPM. I, I will show you guys that in a minute, but. That is how, I'll show you that now, in fact. So that's right here in the top screen, BPM 120. You can set this to let the microphone listen and try to defer and discern the BPM, but I don't like to do that. I like to tap. So whenever I start a song, if I'm changing BPMs or I'm kicking things in, um, I just tap along with it. So if it's like, you know, you just tap for a second and boom, it'll lock in. So you just tap with the beat. If it's a real heavy dance track, you know, you tap it in, boom. That's really, really fast. <laughs> but anyway, you can kind of see how that works. It's really easy. And plus, not only does it sync up with the lights, now that's going at 130, but if you're tapping to the beat, it's gonna sync up perfectly with the beat. So um, I find it, the workflow is really nice. I can sit here and I can put my song on. I can, you know, get, get through the mix. And then I can pop over here and just tap a few taps and boom, I'm, I'm, I'm gold. Okay, so um, I don't have to do that for every song. It's just like when I have substantial BPM changes. And you don't have to be dialed in perfectly. It doesn't have to be, you know, if it's a 130 BPM, you could be 131 or 140 even. People aren't going to notice that as much. But what I do think you need to do is switch between programs because... If I just had this going all night long, you know, with my the movers going around and that, it would be kind of boring. So I have a dance elevated, which just picks up the pace a little bit. You can kind of see the the lights popping a little more. Dance hype, which goes a little more crazy, and the movers are moving around more. And um, okay, and then I've got uh, I got this dance popo, and this is just red and blue <laughs> lights. But then um, here, I'll turn on the. Let me see if I can um, show you guys what the uh, <laughs> the um, moving heads are doing. They're just kind of like spotting around, spotlighting around the room. So that's been really cool. Um, I like that one, Dance Popo. That I don't bring it out all the time, but Dance Fire is just like orange. And you can kind of see orange, red, and yellows. And then uh, it's got a cool, um, I'm using a cool um, gobo. Um, see if I can capture it. You can kind of see it. It's kind of like fire lines or something. Anyway, there's that. There's Dance Ice, which is just some blues and a similar kind of thing. Um, I, more of a, um, I call it my Dance Milestones. This is, these are my colors. So these are like my teal colors for my logo. And I got a teal gobo going on. So anyway, um, Slow Romantic. I use this a lot because um, I'll use this on slow dances. And it's just like warm. Well, I wouldn't say warm colors, but like romantic colors, as you can see in the color wheel here. And it just is a slow, slow fade. So you can see the purple. And uh, this washes the room really nice and just kind of gives a nice, uh, you know, 
environment. And then um, Dance Wild. This is crazy, crazy town. If I drop uh, something crazy, and so basically what's going on is these these uh, washes are blinking like crazy. Okay, as you can see, going through different colors, and the moving heads are going nuts. So <laughs> this is one of the one of the wild ones. Okay, now. I also have this, this is, I think, really important. This clears everything out. I click this, I made this, okay? I made it to where everything is off, okay? And you can see when I click clear, the moving heads you stop moving and lights go off, okay? That's really important because, you know, there are moments like speeches or uh, just whatever, you wanna just shut it down, okay? Um, you can do other things to shut it down, you know, individually, or you can bring the brightness down. But even if you bring the brightness down, watch, okay, dance wild. Here's the brightness control. I got it, you know, I got it down all the way. But look, the movie heads are still going nuts. And you can hear them because we're in a room here. I don't think you'd hear them at a venue or whatever as, as loud, um, especially people far away. But I'm just, I think the clear button is awesome because it just stops everything. And by the way, to set that up, I didn't, I went into some of these controls, but I also had to go into the actual fixtures themselves and um, go into the fixtures and, and set up, um, you know, stop the motion. So that, that actually took a little bit of work, but um, let me show you another couple things uh, that I love about this thing. Um, like I said, it, it's, uh, it's good to mix things up a little bit. And let's say you're getting to a real hype part of a song. And I did this in my little intro. Let's say you're kind of doing dance elevated. Okay. And you it, here, let me turn it down, the brightness down. Okay. We're doing the dance elevated. You could do a couple different things. Okay. You could turn on some strobe action to like, you know, pop it up. Okay. And I'll turn the strobe back off. You can do some stuff like that. That's kind of fun, but I love these right here. Okay, this is like a blinder, a blackout, and a hype button, okay? And this like freezes everything. Um, let me show you the blackout button. You push it and literally things black out. Now, you can see the movers are still moving, but it, they black out, okay? So that's kind of cool. You can do that right before a drop. The blinders, this is crazy, watch this. I mean, everything just comes on bright white, right in your face, and then my favorite, hype button is this if you push it you don't want to just push it and then let it go you want to push and hold it and kind of watch what happens i did this in my intro okay right before the drop watch what happens okay it like builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and then somehow it just feels like it can keep building and then right when the drop happens you can either let it go and it'll go back to the normal mode or you could you know if you're quick you could go over here to the you know, blackout, and then pull off the blackout, you know, you know, blackout here, I'll just see if I can show you. Um, so like, ding, 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 you know, like this would be the, <laughs> the, the build up, the build up, the build up, the build up, and then, oop, that wasn't quick enough, and then you can let it go, and it's back to whatever program, you know, like dance hype or dance elevated, whatever you had on. So, some neat little features here, for sure, for performance, um, and it just makes, uh, you know, DMX lighting and playing around a lot easier than uh, some of the other options. Of course, um, there are some drawbacks. Uh, it's not a hardware device like an actual panel or, you know, a pad, uh, you know, um, a pad device or, uh, you know, a device with sliders where you can move the lights around that way. Those have their benefits for sure, but I really enjoy uh, the Maya DMX Go. I think that it's been, as long as you do the steps that we talked about or perhaps uh, find your own uh, little hacks to make sure that it's consistent, I think it can be really, really helpful. I think that is all I wanted to show you guys about this. I'm gonna um, put one more uh, plug in for um, the get in the mix, uh, update, or I guess it's not, a, it's like a tutorial video. It's very comprehensive about the my DMX go. And, uh, I'm going to put a link to that in the description. So, all right, guys, I'm sorry. That was a little bit of a long video, but I wanted to be comprehensive and show you guys the different ins and outs of how I use the my DMX go. I hope it helped and, um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.